Yes. Okay. One, two, three, four. And uh, isn't that how you're supposed to begin dictating a novel? Testing, testing, one, testing, two, three, testing. four. Do you hear me out there, prospective readers? <laughs> sit down, sit down and talk, and uh, talk into this microphone. And we'll see where it gets to. <laughs> and I'll see the recording level for going. Sit, sit over here near me. Is this live? Yes, it's a live one. Just speak a little louder. Oh, yes, it's picking up. Oh, yeah? Just, it's all just being spectacular. Do we have to hold this, or can we put it somewhere? Oh, let's put it. Because, uh... Let's tie it. I have a feeling we could say more if we weren't conscious of holding... Uh, I have a feeling we could say more if we wanted to. It, it can hear us now. We'll pick up what we say. It's picking up what we say. <coughs> now, how do we make a novel? I well, have we can, you have a character. Yeah. But does your character have a history? Well, that you'll have to tell me. I'll give you the Do we character. make the history, or, or do we uh, <coughs> throw the character into the historical situation? Well, I'll give you the character and you give me her function. All right. We'll call her Rowena. Rowena. Spelled R-O-W-E-E-N-A. E-E-N-A. I like that. That's easy to pronounce because I thought it would be R-O-W-I-N-A and I wouldn't know whether to say Rowena or... <coughs> and she uh, is the lady who murdered Jim <coughs> Vortiger somehow. I think she took uh, some poisonous liquids to King mm -hmm. Vortiger at the very end of that episode. And she has red hair and she comes from Brooklyn. Well, I don't know about King Vortiger, <laughs> but I think she might... Rowena would probably be the kind of person <coughs> who was... Uh, living just outside of this peculiar place that uh, the last German Kaiser was living in in Holland, doing all of these strange things. He would wake up very early in the morning and chop down trees, practically chop down a whole forest all by himself. Why, why? And <laughs> Kaiser and <laughs> forest is too much. No, that's what he did. And so this Rowena would probably have encountered the Kaiser when he was chopping down the trees. And here's the thing, would she know that he was the Kaiser? And if she did recognize him as the Kaiser, would she be a very loyal uh, little Dutch maid and, and despise him? Or would she be... Uh, She'd try to get him to knock her up. <coughs> So that she could marry so the Kaiser uh, of Germany as well she as she could so. be the Kaiser in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, that 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 uh, can give her a stellar role in World War II. And you could probably excuse the rise of Nazism and Hitler as an excuse to 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 reinstate the Kaiser and her, her machinations. You see, her son. Well, but There's so many so big and <laughs> 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 She's just sort of a uh, girl from Brooklyn and, and her past. Oh, her you past. said Brooklyn. Yes, I've forgotten that. Well, it would be hard to... Uh, the Brooklyn to, queen to, of the German Empire. If your Rowena is from Brooklyn, it would be hard to get her to Holland under such circumstances because it would date her. She, she would be there after World War One. Well, that was in the time of Peter Minuet, I think, that the people came to Brooklyn. Isn't that interesting? When you say Brooklyn, I think of 1968. Well, Holland. Now, if you'd say it, if you said St. Mark's and the Bowery, then I would have thought of Peter. Peter. Now it's time to introduce Peter into the story. Ah, yes. Now, 
How do we relate Peter with Rowena? Well, the name, they, they fit. It's a, just a beautiful pair, Peter and Rowena. Peter and Rowena? Peter and Rowena. My dear. <laughs> just too much. I can't face that. We should change. <laughs> we should change. Maybe we should make it Paul. <laughs> okay, Peter is now Paul. Oh, yeah, Peter is now Paul. It's Paul and Rowena. That's <coughs> much better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where does one go having created Paul and Rowena? Well, first we have to figure out who Paul is. He's still sort of blank. At least we begin to get an impression of uh, Rowena. She's beginning to live mm -hmm. a little by herself. But well, maybe Paul is... Uh, I, I don't know. I don't but know are Paul. you back in the 17th century now? Oh, I don't care yet. Mm -hmm. I'm just sort of letting the people come in mm -hmm. and play, and then we'll find out what to because do. Because Paul and Rowena sound very 17th century to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. I should imagine that uh, Paul could be... Uh, well, since you once wrote a novel about New England, why don't we set this one down south for a while? Well, New England was just uh, an accident in my novel. Because of the witch <coughs> trials and things, huh? There's blood on yeah, my hand. because Aristophanes and Cyril Sharon. There's blood on my hand, and that must relate with Mr. Paul. Mm. Paul is a bloody... <laughs> the most bloody, <laughs> the most bloody you can imagine. I the worst thing I think of calling Paul is that uh, uh, the worst thing I can think of calling Paul is a bearer. <laughs> <laughs> a bearer. <coughs> Paul is a bearer. Paul is a bearer. That, that's what he is. Paul is a calling. <laughs> <laughs> Paul is a bearer. There is a very nice feminine name. Paul is Now, we, we introduced subtlety into this. <laughs> now, I think Rowena <clears throat> can sort of just disappear now. We have a new feminine name. We have built a name out of our little talks about these characters. And her name is... Isabella. Isabella. I guess! Isabella! <laughs> exactly. Magnificent! Well, welcome, Isabella. Now we have the lady. Paul and Isabella. And of but course, just, where does that leave King Vortigern? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the one I worry about. But I know, but but, but, but you have Paul and, and Isabella. Then, then we already have the <coughs> end of the novel. Obviously, it ends in, 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 in death. Oh, you yeah, couldn't have Paul and Isabella without uh, Paul being <laughs> a bearer, you know. Yeah. But what about the king? How yeah. did the king get to the United States? What is it? Yes. Well, his name was too long, and they told him when he came across the thing that he'd have to find a new name. I'm not sure what he chose. Oh, him. so he's Paul. Vortigern is Paul. Of course. With a name like Paul, maybe he's Russian. Well, with a name like Russian, it may be, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> with a name like Vortiger, nobody would know who the hell he was. But if he's Russian, he could wear very interesting clothes. Yeah, I mean, imagine how you could describe a 17th century Russian's clothing. In 17th century Virginia? I thought it was Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Okay, yeah. we're back to Brooklyn. I kept proposing that we move mm. south. But all right, they're, they're in 17th well, century. All right, now, but it, it's important to, to figure out the uh, credentials of, of the hero, because then, if, if he is a hero, I mean, if he's a diminutive person, then he's not going to, uh, <coughs> to figure in... Uh, you know, well, I should say that uh, six feet one or two is probably enough. Oh yeah, I mean that that we could we could talk about him a lot that way. Maybe we could just call him how about Paul his last name. You see Paul he's Vortigern. Russian. He's Russian. Well Vortigern is uh, yeah. is brevenized uh, from Morgenstern. Yeah, I mean I, I can understand that. Once but upon I mean, a time the name <coughs> was Morgenstern and so they wanted to make it into a proper English name, so they chose Vortigern. Yeah, but there's there's another thing that I was getting oh yes. Yeah. Paul. Now, say he is six feet two of royal blood, Russian, 
adventurous, but he doesn't speak English. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, oh, this is true. True. <laughs> but he, he will learn it quickly, but I mean, he gives himself a name that sounds like one of the Dutch governors of New York, but, but he doesn't know English well enough and he calls himself Paul Diminutive. <laughs> You'll be careful. You'll have to call the church after you. Maybe you should change his name back to Peter. Peter Diminutive would be very nice. I like Paul Diminutive. Paul Diminutive. Yes, it, it makes the point somehow. Because Paul includes Peter. So. <laughs> so we've got Isabella and Paul. <laughs> yes. Once Paul upon Diminutive. a time, Isabella was Rowena. Once upon a time, Paul, Paul was Peter. <laughs> And of course, I mean, he, he knows enough <coughs> of uh, languages other than Russian so that he would spell diminutive like D-E. <laughs> Paul diminutive. Yeah, Paul diminutive. Yeah, well, I mean, Brooklyn, the tie-up is so good for diminutive. Yeah. So there they are. Do they see anything in each other at first? What is her role? <laughs> I mean, is she a serving girl? Oh, I mean, or I is mean, she the governor's daughter? Or... Oh, I should imagine they, they meet naked when they uh, come out from the public baths by the stake one day or something. Well... I would make it completely artificial that they... If you're going to make uh, it completely might artificial, artificial, then you might as well make it completely real and have her... Uh, the daughter of a hitherto unknown Negro mm -hmm. who was instrumental in, in uh, <coughs> building up Brooklyn. Will you worry New about York her territory. Paris? I'll worry about her tit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are they like? Well, you, it's very interesting. You, you have to know something about <coughs> her stock before you know what she's going to do with her tits, you see. Yeah, I suppose mm -hmm. so. Or else? <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems to me that they met coming out of a bath. And they were both of a there. bath? Yes. In Brooklyn? In yes. the 17th century? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yes, they, they had a, uh, a sauna bath. It was a very nice sauna bath mm. in Brooklyn. Then maybe Paul is a Swede. <laughs> <laughs> no, Russians use sauna baths, too. I once knew what it was. <laughs> then Paul's a lap. <laughs> you could call it what you like, but he did get out of the bath. And what happened then? I think that well, happened. was she switching him in the bath? Was she? I thought that was where they met. That seems odd. Well, you can you can you can meet somebody. <laughs> I mean, you you would certainly if you were taking a bath and someone started switching you, you would certainly meet the person. <laughs> yes, after a while. <laughs> All right, so they met in the bath. And not blase that you don't even look to see who's beating you in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> Smoking a big cigar, you know, <laughs> sweating a big beat, and just. <laughs> well, okay, so they met. My God, this incredible woman! <laughs> <clears throat> now, what's she got? She's got sort of long conical breasts, or are they small champagne style, or are they uh, things that you just sort of push? I imagine them the way I see those of uh, the beautiful Merce Cunningham student, uh, Anna Nortius, in the color picture in Walter's book. Uh -huh. So now we've got her breasts. Mm -hmm. and we've got them in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> and they've met. <laughs> but what do you need for them? Oh, I mean, we're we're as good as going now. <laughs> well, the rest of the novel is going to take place in the bath. The rest we, of the novel. call the novel. <laughs> oh, the novel. In 17th century Brooklyn, <laughs> in the bath, <laughs> in the sauna bath. <laughs> She's switching. <laughs> this is beautiful. And, and you, could, you could call the novel, novel, 
plug, because a sauna would not have a plug, you see. But it would relate plug. to the bath. We could just call it plug. Okay, this book is called Plug. Why is it called plug? Because <laughs> <laughs> we unplugged. No, I'm, 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 uh, <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm asking the question that, that a critic might ask, you know, well, why did you call the novel plug? Because we had to call it something. And, and one could all say, well, uh, that's what it's about, you know, you, we <laughs> plug it in and we plug it out. <laughs> <laughs> Tells what the novel is all about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's true. And so we're there in, in the sauna bath. And uh, now we better get back to <laughs> St. <Saint> Barbara. <laughs> oh, St. Barbara. Oh. Did she come into the bath? Or was she somewhere else at the time? <clears throat> Isn't this her? To my knowledge, there there are no baths taken in, in my whole novel. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But in this novel, I, I don't think there are any baths in, in the clouds. Well, can I borrow St. Barbara for this novel? Oh, you certainly can. I mean, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <coughs> I'll borrow St. Barbara. Now let's get Barbara in there. Mm -hmm. We have these people in the bath, and we've got, well, Brooklyn, and now we can put St. Barbara in there. Well, St. <coughs> Barbara was one of the most popular saints of the Middle Ages, but there is some doubt whether she ever existed, and it is quite certain that her extant legend is spurious. According to this, she was shut up in a tower by her father, who eventually killed her with his own hand for being a Christian. This is located at different places and various times. St. Barbara was invoked against lightning and fire and by gunners because it was said that her father had been consumed by fire from heaven. So that's where we were when, when we were talking about your novel. Maybe you have another saint that we can put in here. Well, we need some saints. What I would like to, to find is a saint. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> yes. I was going to say a saint that, uh, that didn't mean anything to us, the way you say St. Joseph, or St. Paul, St. John, or something like that, or St. Barbara. And here is... Saint Judoc. Okay. K U D O C. Is he in the bath? Judoc, <coughs> or Jossie, was the younger brother of Saint J U D I C A E D R S S L. In his later years, he became a hermit at what is now Saint Jean sur Mer. Died 688. St. Judah is named in several English medieval calendars, spelled with a K here, and his relics are said to have been translated to Hyde Abbey in Winchester. Winchester. Judocus, December 13, IV 550. Uh, Thomas Jefferson's birthday is April mm. 13, now we have December 13. I mean, but say that, that, this that's, an, that's an intriguing bit of information, but I don't have <laughs> the character that we're looking for. <laughs> no. We'll have to find another saint to put in the bath with the others. What about Josepha of Beniganim? I'm all for it. She's a virgin. Oh, well, I don't know about that. I've never had any experience along those lines. Can't you find us a saint that's not a virgin? Now, this is very interesting. Her name in religion was Josefa Maria, but in Spain she is called Inez. <laughs> what can I say? Those Spanish. Let's get the Spanish people out of the novel. <laughs> there's, a good, there's a good name. Here's Henry Morse. Martyr. Henry Morse. That's a pretty good name for for one of our floating characters. Okay. We can put lots of saints in it. He was born in 1595 and received into the church at Dewey in 1618. He was ordained priest and passed his novice ship as a Jesuit while imprisoned at York with the priest of the society. <laughs> How did that happen? Uh, after banishment, Father Morse returned to England and was a successful missioner. 
He returned again after a second exile and was HDQ for his priesthood at Tiburon in 1645. HDQ. Well, he was hanged, drawn, uh, hanged, and quartered. Hanged, drawn, yeah, and quartered, obviously. <coughs> but an awful for people. example, John, John 1, John Paul, John Columbini, John Fisher, John of Beverly, John of Palma, John the Almsgiver, John the Baptist. Yes, HDQ, hanged, drawn, and quartered, whereas CC is only ancient cultus confirmed by the Holy See. Which we say C Holy See. BD is beatified, but it's also a poem I wrote once. Well, look, we're leaving those people in the oh. sauna bath so long. We better get them out oh, there. Yes, well, we've, <laughs> we've got to. Uh, <coughs> we've got to get someone else in the bath. How about Saint Fabiola? I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's a very good one for the bath. Try that. She was a Roman patrician who divorced her dissolute husband and united herself with another man. After his death, she did public penance for this and devoted her time and wealth to works of charity, establishing the first known Christian public hospital in the West. She was associated in her good works with St. Pamachius. St. who? Pamachius. Hmm. In 395, she visited her friend St. Jerome at Bethlehem but he dissuaded her from trying to settle down there. She was too lively. Well, <laughs> St. Fabiola died in 399, and all Rome attended her funeral. Look, I mean, we've got, we've got to use this Fabiola character. All oh, right. The novel is now. Okay, you have... You have got Paul, one man and two girls in there. You have Paul and... What is her name now? Not Rowena. We changed her name to... Uh, uh, Isabella. I'm afraid yeah. she keeps Paul coming and, back to being really Paul and <laughs> Isabella are in the bars, and they're just having a frolicsome time. And uh, they're just making lush love all over the place in the bath. And and this is the first time they've come, though, because they're... <coughs> we're quite all right, so that's <laughs> a better beginning. <laughs> it's a good <coughs> beginning. Yeah. So in comes Fabiola. <coughs> and Fabiola has come to the bars to get clean. And she has never seen this kind of activity before, and she is shocked. Now look. She, oh, she had seen it. Yes, she had. <clears throat> All right, then. So she saw it, and she knew what she saw, and she didn't like it. So then she sets out, and here's the conflict in the novel. She sets out to turn the bath into a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> and so you have these two elements, you see. You have... You have Paul and Isabella making <laughs> love, and you have this uh, this uh, Fabiola coming in, bringing uh, Schweitzer-like characters in there. I mean, Albert Schweitzer-like types trying to reform this whole community. Yes. Yes. All right. And one day, and and you will have things like she will confront them in their love-making scenes and and hold up her hand and say this must stop and of course they don't stop you know and they just well, go right along right. making love while she's making her speeches yes and <clears throat> that's the thing that's the way the she will turn into a voyeur and she's just going to appear suddenly mm -hmm. in, all right they're still in the bath but now let's get them out of the bath she's come in there and she's, <laughs> well, she's taking her clothes <laughs> off, and she's saying, Look at me! Look at me! Look at me! And there we've got the end of the first scene. That's pretty good. Well, another way to get them out of the bath is... <laughs> well, I mean, he didn't really want to come out of the bath. <laughs> I mean, he was having quite a time I there. Really, <laughs> Rowena, you can extend this to another Rowena kind of bath situation. <laughs> <laughs> you have another bad situation. And what you do then is let Fabiola turns off the water. <laughs> but there is no water because it's a sauna bath. Well, I, I mean, after all, I assume that by the time uh, that we get into this thing, the bath will have 
developed. It's not just a chance encounter in the forest. Well, well this has become a public bath. bath. I was thinking of a public bath. Or well, they just walked into the public I mean, bath. I think we're not going to make Susanna and the elders. No, he didn't sneak up and spy on her, but. I mean, they just sort of met him. This is sort of like Fabiola and the Juniors, rather than. Well, <laughs> 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 Well, what I think happened is that he was coming from uh, the south or someplace on the ferry, and he took the ferry over. You know, some uh, fisherman rode him across the East River, and he landed in Brooklyn, and he went to the bath because he needed a bath, and so did she. And they didn't meet, and they just simply happened to be in the bath at the same time, and it worked. Now, what do you mean by bath? A sauna bath. <coughs> a great big and wood what was it house. Been? They had them in yes. the old days. The Indians used to use them. They were good for their health. Ah, then, then this is an American novel. We're going to use... This uh, is Brooklyn still. We're going to use good Indian architecture then. Good Indian architecture, yes. We should take a special note of uh, the mm -hmm. shape of that building with mountains well, and mountains of Maybe Isabel should be an Indian. Oh, that poor girl, she's wandered around so many places. Can't we let Isabel just be? <laughs> she's a good fucker. She has nice tits. And what more does she need, really? With a name like that, she would have to be an Indian. But maybe she doesn't want to be an Indian. I mean, not that one chooses these things, but as a character, somehow, I don't see why she needs to be an Indian, particularly. There are a lot of... Well, I think... <coughs> She's got a little bit of this uh, Kaiser thing in her. Still, you know, because her name used to be Rowena. Yeah. <laughs> George Kaiser thing, too. <laughs> well, so anyway, they he came in on with a fisherman, and he went to the public bath. And he didn't know uh, there was anyone inside, but she was. And that's how that oh. happened. <coughs> and that's when this uh, Saint uh, Fulmatius, uh, Fabiola, Fabiola, <laughs> Fabiola. <laughs> that's when Fabiola appears, and uh, she sees this strange man and this strange woman uh, doing things that are pretty well known to her. And she strips herself and she says, "Wow!" <laughs> <laughs> And they look. <laughs> There's nothing and then they cut all their clothes and go away. <laughs> well, that's how they get out of the bath. I mean, they had to get out somehow. Oh, you <laughs> might. Here's what you might do. I don't know if uh, you uh, might uh, have the genius is watch. Here's what you might do. <laughs> you might have Indian ceremonial baths. And on one side, unbeknownst to the other, is uh, Isabella, and on the other is Paul, and they're taking their baths alone. And then in comes Fabiola, <laughs> and, and, and sees everything and says, LOOK! <laughs> and the two of them, uh, in fright, run together, and they embrace coming out of each, uh, each the other's bath, you see, and they, they, then they find themselves locked in a, in a nice, soapy, uh, <laughs> steady <laughs> embrace. So you know, right? so, well, but anyway, it, it would be so much nicer if they were soapy. You see, oh, you yes, know, they're soapy in the sun. They, <laughs> they, 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 they uh, could slither around a bit. And the, the, their, their first meeting, you see, the, 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 the people in the novel, their first meeting, these two people, is naked and soapy. They embrace <laughs> That's good. So, and then, oh, here's something. After that, see, Fabiola, so here's the, Fabiola frightens them. And through fright, they are thrown together. And naturally, you have uh, uh, the two naked people in this, this soap. And through fright, they are thrown together. And naturally, you have uh, uh, these two naked people in this, this so beautiful place. So it doesn't last long, because then Fabiola is horrified at what she has provoked and what she sees and tries to make a, uh, 
a sinful thing of it. <clears throat> and not a real nice thing like that wouldn't do that. You might get a little jealous or a little... Well, well that isn't that what sin is. <laughs> sin is being jealous? Sin is being jealous as well as sin is being the taboo. But, but I think sin is frequently uh, a jealousy thing. You know, okay. so, so then thou shalt not. Why? Because thou shalt not. Uh, that's right. Sure. Uh, really. Uh, sure, yeah. I never thought of it. Hmm. Okay, so that gives us our motivation for Fabiola. That's a so Fabiola there. Has, has <laughs> Flaviola. <laughs> Flaviola has brought them together, and now she's trying to get them apart. <laughs> What tool uh, she used? <clears throat> and here you have these beautiful conflicts. Here, because all she sees is ugliness, and and Isabella and Paul, uh, we can have them both virginal as far as that goes. Isabella and Paul are virginal, and old Flabby Fabiola. Uh, <laughs> Take care. You're speaking of right. Right tries to shame them into feeling bad about this whole thing. But our two pure people here don't know the meaning of, <laughs> of baddie baddie. You know, they just know that that, that, well, that uh, in a moment of fright they ran into one another's arms well, look, and soaked up and hot as they were, it felt very good. And so sort they of stayed together. And uh, but what happened was, I think... You know, that, that would be very interesting there. If you could, that, yeah, she's going to be a real saint, then. then she has to be nice. We were looking for a real swell saint. We weren't looking for a horrible saint. I mean, lots of horribles. We don't have to put them I in know, but I mean... But we've gotten to another kind of thing. I wonder if it's too late to make a novel of innocence. That is to say, here you have, oh God. Here you have Paul and Isabel, both virginal. You might say like the first man and the first woman, but that's carrying it a bit too far. And they are thrown into one another's arms when they are soapy and so on, and they learn uh, for the first time what happens when... Uh, <laughs> well, the hot soapy man and the hot soapy <laughs> woman are <laughs> both <laughs> together for a bit. Uh, yeah. He has a big erection <clears throat> and uh, they are uh, locked in a situation where that suggests that uh, he might do something with this. Would well, he know? You, no, you, for instance, if you had purely virginal creatures, how instinctively would he know what to do with it? He would have watched the birds. He would watch the birds do it. He might be very confused if he watched the dogs do it. Of course, we, we, are, we are having them uh, uh, emerge full-blown from a clamshell or <laughs> something, too, never having seen anything. Oh, but, but, but people from clamshells watch That's them. why you really can't make a novel of innocence, because nobody's innocent. Right. Unless you Literally created birds. Unless you, as a novelist, created two dumb people and put them together. <laughs> <laughs> and we need to write a novel about it. And it's intended that, uh, you know, <coughs> there's plenty of stupidity. You could structure innocence very nicely like that, but I don't think it would mean anything. Well, all right. So, in other words, they, they're smart enough to know what to do once they've figured out that it feels good. Mm -hmm. And they're loving well, let's say, oh, okay, so, uh, so, okay, they, they know what goes on in the world, so they weren't created yesterday. Uh, and they, they knew that such things were possible, they knew that men and women got together, but this was the first time they had ever uh, been in such a situation themselves. And, and they took strange, advantage of it. What's so strange about this particular couple is that both of them, it's so natural that uh, they, they were really very innocent about it, and there was absolutely no particular <coughs> stigma or emotional tone involved, I think. And still, I think we have, it was, it was, it was Fabiola's shout that brought them together, and it was fear that, that uh, 
<coughs> got them together. But for the fear, you wouldn't have known how to put it in, you mean? Well, maybe. No, no, I mean, it was fear that, that uh, made uh, this is a bear, or <laughs> is a bear, or whatever the cunt's name oh, is, oh, yeah. and Paul. <coughs> I like it, Paul. It was fear somehow that brought the two of them together. Okay. I don't, I don't think that's making too pompous a statement no. to bring them together like that. After all, I mean, uh, thunderclaps are very real. Well, and uh, you know, uh, sitting on attack is very real. Right? You, you sit on attack, from the usual you will sit on attack, and if you happen to sit on attack at a time that uh, a young lady is uh, walking by you, you might startle her <laughs> into grabbing you. The same kind of thing that <clears throat> happened uh, uh, with the Kato and me uh, the first time. Uh, but it was a very silly situation. We were in the subway and we got out of the subway uh, I think we'd had a beer at uh, one of those places at University Place so anyway we got in the subway and went back to her place and I saw a sign outside of the subway station and we were walking like this and I turned and said look and my hand was outstretched and she misinterpreted the gesture and thought that I was going to embrace her and she, she, uh, oh! That's exactly what happened. I turned around. We were walking and I turned around. Look! And, and, and we found ourselves together. Oh, my gosh. It, it was just very peculiar that was. Okay. A well, total accident, you see. If we could only have a thought of that in the subway, we could put that into the novel for these people. But that's sort of hard. It's got to be said in Brooklyn. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, what, who is going to say look and at what in 17th century Brooklyn? <laughs> you know, in a thought. I'll tell you what. Hmm. The person who said look was uh, our old friend Fregonia. Oh, Fabiola. <laughs> Fabiola. Fabiola. Is it Fabiola the name of the, the wife <laughs> of the present king of Belgium or something? I really should think that would be a and good And isn't his name both Belgium? I don't think they hired you, though. Yes, I think she was Spanish, wasn't she? Flemish. Well, the owner, I thought she was Spanish. I thought he took a Spanish bride. No? I'd call her Flemish. Because I think... <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> call her Flemish. I think she's Spanish. Uh, <laughs> Some of the most marvelous Belgians have been Flemish. <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have the Reader's Diary Almanac from 1966 here. Yeah. I don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> I think that will tell you more about uh, that Flaviola than you need to worry about. <laughs> I mean, if, if this is all the book contains, then it's not even worth looking at. <laughs> oh, yes, our book has more than that. <laughs> But I don't think we need worry about that. What I think is no. I, I, I mean, I'm not not Fabiola because we may get ideas from from the relevance of the name. For instance, uh, I think we might as well look at Baudouin to see if his bride is Fabiola. Is Louis de Bricola Bauer. <coughs> Did you realize it was someone called Louis Agricola Bauer? Not until you invented it for me. Do you know who? Now here is someone for a novel. Louis Agricola Bauer. Eighteen sixty five. 1932, American magnetician, influential in international coordination of work in terrestrial magnetism, founded and edited terrestrial magnetism and atmospheric electricity. <laughs> all right, all right. But you're going to ruin Rowena Dennis if you force that guy on us so quickly. Oh, but I hadn't found, I hadn't come to Baudouin. Well, so there you are. 
can do with anything but our fab. No, but here's a picture of it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what was the name of the father of Leopold III? <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me Leopold II. <laughs> I haven't any idea. Somewhere there was a Crown Prince Bernard, but I don't remember if that was in Belgium or uh, wherever. It was Leopold's <coughs> father who fell off the mountain, wasn't it? Uh, wasn't it the father of Leopold III who fell off the mountain? Queen Astrid was killed in an automobile accident. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I mean, uh, <coughs> that was very sad. That was in 1937. But there's no Fabiola here. So the, uh, I know, there's no Fabiola. <laughs> I was looking for it and it wasn't in the book. But this is Fabiola. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a good family name for the novel. Why do we call her Familia? Sounds too mealy to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'd like to meet a girl named Familia. Actually, I could assure you of meeting a girl. <laughs> you wouldn't maybe, one maybe, maybe we could use the... <clears throat> You know, I've often thought you could you could do a good novel <coughs> somehow taking off from this uh, little paragraph in one of Carl Jung's essays about mothers. He uh, sort of knocks mother with it and exposes it as the abomination it is by remind, reminding people that every monster ever conceived had a mother. <laughs> you know? uh, that the worst things that world has produced had a mother. Hitler had a mother. Everybody has a mother. And so when you speak about motherhood, you, you are automatically talking about all of the monsters who've ever been raised. And it's almost a, a defense mechanism to, to say motherhood. It's a very interesting point that he meant. But can a girl be all bad just because she's a No, mother? no, I mean just, but, but it's just the, the phoniness of screaming motherhood as though any woman who bears a child is automatically good. Sort of like bury a child and, and get rid of original sin or something. I mean, the fact that uh, there are probably, in, in the, the history of, uh, of the world, there are very few uh, uh, procreations that were intended as procreations, you know, in this sense unless you can imagine some Victorian setting, and we, we have instances of that, at least uh, people speaking outwardly of <clears throat> marriage, and the first night the man seeks to inseminate the woman, and then they wait <laughs> to see if she is impregnated, and if not, then he tries again, but... Uh, Very little in between. <clears throat> well, certainly not with not with the person who well, is going to have the exalted title of mother. These see. are different kinds of... No, yes, but, but certainly the, the exalted title of mother is not to be confused with the man's normal life. See. But, but you have these... That's why motherfucker is such a strange word, you see. I mean, you can fuck any woman you like, but don't be a motherfucker. And in reality, all, <laughs> all women are mothers, you see. It's impossible to separate the two. Yes, it's well, it's impossible not to be a motherfucker. It's impossible. it's impossible not to be a motherfucker. Anyone who well, has no. sexual intercourse suppose, suppose is a motherfucker. Suppose the can't have children. Well, that's then. a footnote. <laughs> <laughs> well, then she wouldn't be a mother, particularly. She'd be... Uh, but uh, 
It is interesting how the, 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 that, that uh, such an expression came to be. But I think now it has come to its own again. And you, can, you can refer to the good human man as a motherfucker. Now, and it doesn't even, even make him uh, drop his cookie. Well, maybe, maybe by dragging Flaviola into the thing, he created a mother. Or do you want to watch out about that? <coughs> oh, mother! <laughs> if you do what you're doing with me, and I like it, well, mother! Now, as I remember the Saint Flaviola now, she was had, a woman, she, she, was, she was not a virgin. Oh, she might have been a martyr, but she said he wasn't a virgin. Had she had children? Well, she di she divorced her her depeached or depraved or something husband. Uh, debauched or <laughs> or deluded or what was it? Uh, whatever. It was. I remember it began with a D. Whatever. Well, it was. we'll say that she disencamped from thence. <laughs> she uh, established a relationship with mm -hmm. another man of some mm -hmm. sort, and uh, she then proceeded uh, to Rome, I suppose, where everyone else went. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a long time before Brooklyn. <laughs> With Prince Bernard. <laughs> <coughs> I have a feeling <coughs> that it was uh, a Leopold who fell off the mountain. I would never go to Rome with Leopold or Bernard or, or Princess Wilhelmina. Her father was William. That was the king of Holland before. <laughs> you know, she started, how long did she reign? About 70 years? Something like that. <clears throat> I think it was over 60 years. She had it down to Jubilee and then some. And her father was uh, William. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the ruling houses have certainly had some some peculiar things in the women that they had on the throne, you know. I mean, imagine uh, an imbecile like Victoria reigning for so long. You know, someone who just wasn't bright. You know. But she was a good horsewoman. <laughs> and she certainly And had. she really stuck to it. Uh, how different, say, from from uh, uh, from good Queen Bess, who was uh, <clears throat> who sort of made her way. Good Queen Bess. Now you're uh, talking about as a freshman in college. I got special permission to take a course called the History of Intellectual History of All Things from Dr. Hall, who was chairman of the history department. And uh, <clears throat> the history of intellectual history turned out to be full of such nuggets as, did you know that, that Queen Elizabeth was such a victim of congenital syphilis that she couldn't get the point of a pencil into her organ to say nothing about demands? You know? <laughs> uh, stuff, it was just full of things like that. And then, so I asked Dr. Hall what they did. They had pencils in those days, and you know, and, uh, <clears throat> it was really a terrible thing. I don't have any You look back on such courses in college as a lot of fun, but really they were horrors when you were actually in things like that, when you were exposed to these idiots. You know. Why do you suppose he got his jollies from telling stories like that? He's a depraved person, probably. And mind you, this was uh, uh, <coughs> at a church with some uh, affiliation with the Episcopal Church and Lord Kenyon and all sorts of things like that. And here you have uh, the head of the history department telling you things like that and suddenly called the history of intellectual history. I think his only publication was uh, an essay called On the History of Intellectual History. Very small, insignificant thing. Sort of like a, a, a long book review. 
Why did you get special gave, permission to take this course? Well, I, yeah, I was, it, because it was available only to uh, to uh, <coughs> people majoring in history. I was I was a lowly freshman, you see, and, and although I had a scholarship in writing with Ransom, that didn't involve the history department. I had to get special uh, depart, uh, special uh, permission to sit on Cahal's uh, great course. And I must say that uh, <clears throat> I, I really wasn't mature enough to take that course. <laughs> I mean, I dropped out uh, about three weeks along because it was just utterly boring. You know? I had an idea that this was going to be a formative experience. It turned out to be a gossip session. <clears throat> Got its prestige from the uh, position well, it, it, the man who taught it. it, it, it I suppose it's what, yeah. what, what did he call these courses? Uh, well, there's a complete fraud that the history majors would sit in there and listen to jokes from the person who was going to uh, grade their thesis. And say, so. It was a great honor to be able to sit there in this, this supreme court. You know. Where did and he, he would explain it as the culmination of the history made in Europe. And that, who was Frobenius? Frobenius, Otto Frobenius, <coughs> was a German ethnographer. whose uh, great legacy to the uh, <laughs> modern world is the Frobenius Institute in Frankfurt on Main. And I did a lot of work there for, for Paul. I know he was in the uh, ethnology. And Africa was his thing. And well, I see, I think in Frobenius we have our ideal speculative mate, the Gladiola. The name has always appealed to me. Well, the There's something that you, you find these Germans with these Latin names, yeah. Robinius, that sort of sounds like a, an immortal immediately. Right? Oh, yeah. oh, but I like the Germans because I like the way they are so mortal and nice. Do we know any other Germans with Latin names like that? I do. Name what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just thinking of a very nice. <coughs> No, there's Frobenius. I know of it, but I cannot think of them just now. Oh, there's not a lot of I mean, there must be quite a number. Alphonius, the, the medieval poet, or the late Rome Latin poet. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, a, I mean, a twentieth, <laughs> I mean, a twentieth century person like <coughs> instead of Otto Bauer. It's Otto Frobenius. <coughs> and you couldn't even bring yourself to say Frobenius. You would just say Frobenius. The way you would say uh, Athenaeus. <laughs> oh, about Athenaeus. Now, there is a person who wants to fit into our novel. He, he, came, he came up with one of the funniest things. Uh, <coughs> he has this character. He's quoted from a, a Greek author <coughs> who was so cheap that he would go to the bars. Oh, here we are at the bars. Of course, that's why I'm thinking of it. He would go to the bars and put his hands in the hottest water and just got them soaked there so that he could stand in ten feet and he would drink hot waters at the baths, just scalding, and he, he accustomed himself to be able to uh, to uh, handle things uh, that were very hot. And his trick was to induce the chefs of the rich Athenians to serve piping hot food, and this guy would gobble it all up. No one else could touch it, but this guy could pick it up in his hands and eat it all up before anyone else had any. 
Well, there's a very good thing. Isn't is that marvelous? I mean, he really, uh, the supreme glutton. I mean, he cultivated the <clears throat> this temperature thing so that he could handle hot foods and, 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 and eat hot foods, piping hot, but everyone else was just waiting around to cool off. <laughs> so an ingenious. <laughs> the original chiseler. <laughs> <clears throat> That's why Athenaeus is good, because uh, he brings such stories uh, to us. <laughs> Can you imagine using a, a, a bath for, for such purpose? They did get out of that path. Oh yeah, our character, <laughs> what are our characters doing now? Well, they got out of the bath and they maybe got yeah. in the boat. What it sounds like now is they got out of the bath and, and, and started reading a book. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to take the book out of their hands or it's not going to be a very good novel. <clears throat> the novel's over. Do characters in novels read novels? Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Hmm? Novel over? Yeah, I guess the novel is over. <laughs>